Thomas the Tank Engine has worked his branch line for many years and knows it very well. Just where to stop, Thomas, laughed his driver. You could almost manage it without me. Thomas had become conceited. He didn't realize his driver was joking. Later, he boasted to the other. Driver says I don't need him now. Don't be so daft, snorted Percy. I'd never go without my driver, said Toby earnestly. I'd be frightened. Huh, boasted Thomas. I'm not scared. You'd never dare. I would then. You'll see. The next morning, the firelighter came. Thomas drowsed comfortably as the warmth spread through his boiler. Percy and Toby were still asleep. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the mud, he chuckled. I'll show them. The driver said I could manage without him. I'll just go out and then I'll stop and wheeze. That'll make me. Jump. Thomas thought he was clever. Really, he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his control. He soon found his mistake. He tried to wheeze, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. Horrors, cried Thomas, and shut his eye. The house rocked, broken glass tinkled, plaster was everywhere. Thomas had collected a bush on his travel. He peered into the room through his leaves. He couldn't speak. The station master was furious. His wife picked up her plate. You miserable engine, she scolded. Just look what you've done to our breakfast. Now I shall have to cook some more. She banged the door. More plaster fell. This time it fell on Thomas. Thomas felt depressed. Workmen propped up the house with strong poles and laid rails through the garden. And then, the Scottish twin engines Donald and Douglas arrived. Dinner fashion, yourself, Thomas. We'll soon have you back on the rails. Douglas, puffing hard, managed to haul Thomas back to safety. Bits of fencing, bush, and a broken window frame festooned his front, which was badly twisted. The twins laughed and left him. Thomas was in disgrace. There was worse to come. You're in a lot of trouble, Thomas. I know, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Thomas's voice was muffled behind his bush. You must go to the works and have your front mended. It will be a long job. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, a diesel rail car will do your work. A, a, a diesel, sir? Thomas sputtered. Yes, Thomas. Diesels always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Diesels never gallivant off to breakfast in the station master's house. 